doing another garden video here. Um, thought I'd do it a little differently this time because my phone, my cheap phone, takes better pictures than it does video in the sun. And so I thought maybe I'd do sort of a screencast with pictures instead of video. Um, and just kind of go through them here and point out some things. Um, still been pretty dry. We did get one rain about a week or so ago, but it's things are already dried out again and I've been watering the last few days. Um, this is kind of the cabbage and broccoli patch here. Um, got some of them under jugs, which you would think these jugs would, would cook them, but they don't. I guess they must hold in enough moisture along with the heat that they do just fine under those. And it keeps chickens and deer and things from eating them. Um, it also, you know, it doesn't completely keep cabbage worms off of them because they can, they can fly in there, the butterflies can. But I think it does, does reduce it somewhat. Um, but some of them are actually getting big enough. I think I got a picture of one later that I'm going to need to let them out pretty soon. Um, got a few tomatoes that I picked up and put just along the uh, along the trellis here in some spots where there weren't beans. Um, I'm going to train them up the trellis. That I've done that before. It really works pretty well. Um, I might have to add a little more twine just to kind of reinforce it where they are, but um, really works pretty well. And then that way they can they'll they'll climb that high. Um, and if you just if you use the the little rings that you see, a lot of times they're not really enough to hold a tomato plant. It'll, it'll knock them over. There's a Swiss chard plant. Um, one of the smaller ones I've got right now. And my finger in the way. Um, just watered this one. That's why there's some drops on it. There's a, probably a broccoli, I'd say. Um, it's possible it's cabbage. That's one that's been under a, a jug for a while. It'll probably have to be let out soon because it's actually about as big as the jug. Um, some rows of, uh, well, these would be black-eyed peas um, right here in the middle where the dogs dug up some moles. Uh, they dug up the beans too, and so I've put in a couple of cabbage plants there, but the rest of this is uh, black-eyed peas. They're not setting on pods yet, but they're getting close to that. And then this is other beans. I forget exactly which ones. Just other dry beans, uh, shell beans. And I don't know if it really shows in the picture, but they've been suffering, especially back here close to the asparagus row. I don't know if the asparagus is, is uh, you know, stealing too much moisture from them or what, but I've had to water them up in that area more than anything else. This is the potatoes. They're... Uh, they, they're not as weedy as they look here. Uh, the picture kind of shows off the grass that's sticking up, but they're starting to turn. Um, probably digging them. I've been digging a few uh, red potatoes that were over here along this side that I think dried out as much as they as much as died down. But the rest of them will be coming along pretty soon. That's a strawberry plant. Um, took a picture of that because I think you can kind of see where it has sent out runners. Like there's one up here um, that's rooted down. There's one out here. There might be one in this area. So I think there could be one out here. So I'll be able to dig those up and get you know, probably like six plants out of this one plant. They haven't all sent out that many runners, but um, I think in the fall is probably when I'm supposed to do that um, and be able to expand the strawberry patch quite a bit. This is just a volunteer green bean, uh, pole bean that came up in the middle of the potato plant. So I stuck a, I stuck a post in the center there for it to climb on. It's really not tall enough. I need to strap something taller to it because uh, the post is only like three feet tall. They'll go a lot higher than that. Uh, this is the dill which came up volunteer. Um, it's getting close to the dill seed stage where you can gather the dry seed. It's pretty much past the dill weed stage where you can use the, the green stuff. And this is sweet corn planted about four or five days ago that's starting to come up um, just in a, in a spot. I went ahead and started a new, a new patch. 
and this is a toothache plant. I actually, when I set this out, I thought it was a pepper plant because um, it was in a in an indoor you know seed starting thing, and I had planted I forget which I planted in it first, but I planted one of the two, either either the toothache plant or the pepper plant in it first, and that didn't come up, didn't come up, and then I finally reused it and. I thought it I thought it ended up being a pepper plant, but it was actually the toothache plant, so I got plenty of that. Not that I have a toothache right now, but if you get one, it, it actually does work um, pretty well. It numbs your tooth just kind of like using a aura gel or something like that. Um, right here on the right of it is a couple of cauliflower plants that I'll need to uh, transplant to somewhere else. Okay, this is the south plot. Awful in the picture. Actually, it doesn't look this bad in uh, the real thing. But right here, south of this, or yeah, south of this post is where I planted the um, Yukon Gold potatoes. I, I bought a bunch of seed potatoes at Farm and Home. They had them <clears throat> on clearance for ten cents a bag for so basically two cents a pound, um, <clears throat> more or less free. Um, so I went ahead and bought a bunch of them that I hadn't really planned on, 25 pounds of them, and planted them over here. Um, and I think 10 pounds of them were the Yukon Gold, which didn't come up very well at all. There's maybe six or eight of them in this area here. Um, thought maybe some more would come up as uh, after the rain, but it doesn't really seem like it. They were pretty dried out when I got them, so I knew they weren't going to be great, but they are practically free. And then this is the ones, the Kennebec up north of that post, which came up quite a bit better. Still, maybe half of them came up, but um, be a little extra late potatoes there. And this is on the other side of the onion seed, or the, the onions that are going to go to seed here, um, where I've got the vining plants. Look, getting a, starting to get a little bit weedy over here. The, there was just enough rain to kind of get some weeds started, but not really too much. This would be a cucumber, I'm pretty sure, from the shape of the leaves. This is a watermelon. There, I think I've got two two hills of watermelon, and they're just kind of starting to vine out. They're not very big yet. That would be a zucchini, I'm pretty sure. We've only got one of those, but if it's a zucchini, that's all you need. These are a couple of um, butternut squash it's a winter squash um, they're hurting in the heat as much as anything I, these were just watered yesterday um, but just when it's this hot and clear sky all day they do suffer a little bit I think they're they're really growing fast right now so they could really use all the moisture they can get all right over in the west plot you can see the sweet corn here is kind of reaching its end um, it didn't do very well. I think it really it really suffered in the early heat. Um, made a lot of small ears, um, and I might have I might have had it too thick. I planted it pretty thick, and then I didn't really thin it maybe as much as I should have. And then when you when you also don't have enough water, that's you know kind of compounds it. Um, so it made a lot of small ears, and some of them didn't fill out very well. This would be lettuce that's gone to seed, uh, butter crunch lettuce. It's getting close to the point of um, harvesting the seed and saving it. That is mustard, which also is starting to get some of it's dry and some of it's still green, so it's not really ready to do anything with yet, but it's getting there. That is borage, which is almost shiny in the sunlight. It's an, an herb. I forget what it's for. And some couple of rows of carrots here. Got a few grass weeds coming up in them. Need to get those out of there. And this would be the Swiss chard, or part of the Swiss chard patch, the main one. Um, which it, it's looking great. It usually does. It handles, handles heat about as well as anything. Um, it'll slow down in the heat, but it doesn't ever bolt. So that 
that's why I prefer it over like over like spinach. You can use it for the same sort of things, but um, you can use it all year long. Got a couple of a few broccoli plants here next to it. Um, they might end up being too close together. I might end up having to spread them out. They're, they were just some that I planted there, intending to move them later, and then they, they got big on me, and um, now they might be too close together. Uh, I got a kale plant here on the left, and a beet on the right. Kind of a little row of beets with a few kale plants mixed in, where there were empty spots here. Uh, these are. Um, snap beans uh, purple green and yellow they kind of started to produce um, a couple weeks ago and then I think the heat kind of knocked them down though though that'll happen with beans if it gets really hot sometimes it can I think just kind of kill the blooms and then you don't get any um, pods off of those but I think now they're starting to put on some you know since we had a little cooler weather they're starting to produce again This is just a couple of rows of other um, dry beans. Uh, the row closer to me here would be um, red red kidney beans, and they're starting to they've they've got some pods that are starting to dry out and be ready to to pick. Um, the fur the row further away is um, pinto beans. They're a little they've got further to go, and there's a little bit of grass in there that needs to be pulled. There's the red kidney beans. I picked one to see how they were doing. So yeah, there, there's some there that could be picked and and either used or I mean these are ready to be picked and stored. But um, there's probably probably plenty that are still a little green that could be picked and used right away. This would be a scallop squash, a summer scallop. Um, I think they were white, uh, white summer scallop squash, which came up volunteer. There's actually about 20 of them which is about 19 more than I need um, but I'm gonna let a few of them grow here anyway that's another kale which I stuck here in the um, herb garden where some herbs died when it was just too hot so I've probably got more kale than I need to and this is the marshmallow plant which has just or plants which have just taken over the herb garden I didn't think they weren't supposed to be this tall I don't think um, it's kind of obnoxious really so I'm thinking in the fall I may dig these or in the winter I may dig these things up and try to move them somewhere else because they're they're enormous and um, taller than the taller than the porch which is, looks kind of stupid I think so I'm gonna get I think I'm gonna get them out of there and try to you know use the herb garden for something a little smaller plus they're they're right in the front so you can't even you can't even really plant anything behind them um, unless it's something that, should be shaded all day so kind of aggravating so I think yep then we're back to the beginning so I think that's it um, be interesting to see how this works out doing a video like this maybe if it works I'll do it more often because trying to find a time when it's not too windy for the sound or too sunny for the light or anything like that to, to get a decent video can be kind of tough so Hope this worked out okay and hope you enjoyed watching it.